come support me on Patreon. Yay! Well, hello there, guys. Welcome to our first ever episode of Draw With Mikey, or I don't know, Come Draw With Me, something like that. Basically, some kind of really casual uh, Let's Draw episode where I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want. The idea of this series is to complement some of the drawing tutorials that we have going on, which is great. We'd upload a drawing tutorial on a uh, Saturday, and then the following Wednesday or whenever, hopefully we get something similar up where I just expand on the ideas and we get some more drawing time in. As a general rule of thumb, as ever you guys, I want you to uh, dive in with me, get yourself a pen, paper, pencil, whatever, follow along at home, or if you're just working on your own projects, your own manga, artwork or anything, maybe just have this run in the background and we can like draw together and be like drawing friends he he yay won't that be awesome um i'm just gonna dive in at the moment and draw whatever the hell i want basically um i'll maybe search for some bits online on my computer screen just off shot here and play around a bit because um the last tutorial that we just had was the last of our digital coloring lesson tutorials so um i can't do any digital coloring with this pen and paper that would be magical if I actually could. So instead I'm going to just draw whatever the hell I want. Um, yeah, so come join in. Get yourself some ah, lovely sweet cup of tea in the background. And uh, as you can tell, this is completely, <laughs> completely unscripted. Uh, to be fair, most of my tutorials are an absolute mess anyway. So this could probably be really, really similar. Right. Get in the comments, everybody. The whole point of this is if you want to talk to me about anything art based or you've got any thoughts or any questions or anything, then um, come get involved, basically. This will be a great place to answer those questions or talk to you about stuff and or ting. And uh, yeah, well, basically, we'll talk about anything. I will wrap it on as well. What I hope to do is keep these down to maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes or half an hour, not make them overly long. Uh, the sketching will obviously just be real time. I might maybe time lapse at the very end if I draw some stuff but then want to really go over at the end and kind of make it look a little bit better and just to let you know like this is going to be a really low standard and quality of artwork i'm not going to be doing any masterpieces on here but i might play around with a few ideas so don't expect poster worthy stuff do expect um to come join along and pass some time what a pleasure having you people Right, so what am I doing right now? I was just thinking, because uh, I did a digital art piece a while ago as part of a series of commissions um, based on Game of Thrones, some kind of popular show. Never watched it myself. It can't be that big of a hit after all. No, I'm joking. I do actually bloody love it. And I was thinking about the whole Jon Snow situation. Yes, everybody believes he's going to be back in the following season, which is great news. I bloody hope he is. And there were two common fan kind of theme ideas about how that was actually going to happen. Let's just check through the camera phone, just making sure stuff comes up on the paper. Um, one theory was that he would be born back of ice or be like a right, but uh, still with some sort of conscience, basically like Cold Hands, who I believe personally is Jojen Stark. Spoiler alert! And uh, <laughs> basically, um, that sounded really good, but it kind of seems too obvious that Melisandre has made it back to Castle Black just in time. In the books, she uh, stayed there, I think, and in the series, she's ridden on home. And we know about, uh, ever since we saw Forrest of Mir and his crew, that uh, the Red God Rolora, loves to uh, reanimate corpses when he feels like it. So basically, I reckon that's on the card. He's going to be reanimated of fire. He's going to be born of flame. He will be Azor Ahai, or a variation. On Azora High, because basically Daenerys, old Danny girl, she's pretty much Azora High as well. Maybe we're gonna two for it in the books. Old George R. R. We we can never tell with him that, and he uh, can always leave us a little trick. Maybe we're gonna double our Azor a high bounty in the Game of Thrones series, Song of Ice and Fire. My God, I love those books so hard. Like, if my brain could get a boner, I would have a massive brain boner erection every time i read those books in fact i'm probably going to read them again maybe read them in french just to give myself a bit of a language challenge not that i can speak any good french je parle un peu mais uh, pas très bien but although <laughs> you can tell this is literally what the series is going to be by the way everybody just me waffling about anybody and anything i am um, i'm a massive massive fan of the david lynch release of dune that old classic which i don't think is rated very highly but i bloody love it for no particular reason Love the Dune books as well. One of the best sci-fi novels ever written. And 
Oh, we, me and one friend of mine from work, this guy Patrick from my old work, like top bloke. Between us, we could basically recreate the Dune script if it ever got lost to antiquity. We just, we just knew it so well. Uh, in the beginning, the beginning is a very delicate time. No then, but it's the year 10,191. And so on from Princess Rulian. And we were watching it so much that we had to set ourselves new challenges. So I started learning it in French, <laughs> which is just possibly the geekiest thing I could share with you guys in the first episode of a brand new Draw With Me series. But there you go, you've learned something. I'm a fucking loser and I bloody love it. As long as I'm drawing, I don't need to be a winner. I just need to have a pen and some paper. Join along. Un commencement est à un moment de délicatesse extrême. Sachez donc que l'on est en l'an 1191. L'univers... Oui, l'univers connu et gouverné par l'empereur Padishar Shalam IV, mon père. À cette époque, la plus précieuse substance connue à l'homme est l'espice mélange. Anyway, I could go on, but basically what I'm doing is saying the intro to Dune in French, en français. Bonjour, mes amis, from all over the world. Um, salut, and hola, como estas? Uh, to the Espanolas and the Mexicanos, and so on. Big pleasure. I notice a massive anime manga art crowd is in fact like a spanish crowd which is really really cool i'm ever so slightly brown myself but i'm not quite spanish brown guess in the comments below what kind of mixed race is mikey you'll never ever get it i promise and if you do wow that's that's good you'll win some kind of a prize you'll win my respect for knowing genetics well done well done indeed so anyway back to the drawing what i was thinking of doing kind of vaguely is um, summarizing the whole Born of Flame thing. We know that Jon Snow, back on topic, um, probably isn't going to be Born of Ice. I did a commission about him being Born of Ice and I loved it, like the Wraith, Jon Snow, um, John Hands, Snow Colds. I'm trying to combine Jon Snow's name and Cold Hands' name. Yeah, John Hands. Mm, no, that is rubbish. And uh, basically, I was thinking it's likely to be really graphic it might involve some weird outer body experience where Jon Snow shares his mind with his wolf as a warg him and um Snow would eventually kind of be together wait what's the wolf's name Snow is it Snow oh my god I've forgotten his wolf's name yeah you know what I mean the dire wolf the white one white wolf we'll call it Michael Jackson wolf racist wolf white power so um he'll probably maybe become one of the wolf maybe he'll uh, understand his true heritage more spoiler alert, Sarah, just deal with it. I'm not making any apologies. Um, or maybe not. Maybe Melisandre will simply give him the kiss of life and he'll simply wake up and that'll be it. But I was just thinking of like doing some kind of digital art piece where we had this really graphic shot of him uh, being born again of a flame, of light coming out of his mouth, of the stab wounds somehow emitting light as well that he'd uh, have on him. I think... In the books, maybe he's stabbed four times. I think George R. R. writes something like he didn't feel the fourth push of a knife or something. He only felt the cold, kind of not quite abbreviating it very well. But basically, he wrote it really, really well. It's really sad and really amazing all at the same time. As such, um, I just thought maybe I'd sketch out a vague idea in relation to it. Got to keep it really rough and loose. Otherwise, this episode will last forever and ever and ever. But Welcome to Draw With Mikey, everybody, except you've always been here drawing with Mikey forever and ever and ever. Hope you guys are drawing something at home and drawing something that you enjoy. Isn't that nice? Let's go. Old Jon Snow's hair, he's got like, it's kind of really good girly locks. And I say really good, um, quite wrongly. He's got just this absolute mess of a hair, It's but it has this like... I don't know, Katie Melua vibe to it, but it kind of reminds me about. I just kind of think, yeah, good old Melua. She really had an excellent head of curly hair. That's pretty much what my hair looks like when the hat's not on. You'll never know. Unless you go into a really old video where I show you some great cornrows that I was busting out back in the day. Ah, oh, first days. Long gone. Long gone, Jon Snow. You do know nothing, but maybe you'll learn something in your second death. What I was thinking as well is what's coming up next? Um, oh, yeah, I've got to be doing Sexy Enemy Saturday this Saturday. That will be good. Um, your comments as ever leading me to decide what I'll actually be drawing. Your suggestions. And believe it or not, that's not even my idea, the idea of you deciding what I uh, draw. This came up from uh, a friend of mine on YouTube, another channel, this dude called Ada Horror. 
he actually came up with this idea. It's absolutely brilliant. It's uh, been a massive guiding thing of the channel ever since. And I strongly recommend you check out his channel. He uh, does Let's Plays. Loads of people do. But his are actually really unique because he dresses up as characters all the time uh, when he does different Let's Plays. And he dresses up in characters based on your suggestions as well. You choose his costume. And basically, he's a massive pussy as well. Like, he is terrified of scary games. If you've seen, like, my alien isolation scare compilation where it's just like two solid minutes of me screaming and breathing horribly uh then you know if you like that his is a very similar vibe and lots of screams lots of fun to be had oh john snow that's a bit black around the eyes why not because he's been out for a while it's it's very cold for him and i was thinking well about what are we gonna do around here obviously this isn't gonna look very good it's not gonna look like john snow but i just want to record the idea of a theme and i can come back to it and draw it digitally later melisandre this lady she is a unique kind of thing she's a witch in a very traditional sense well done again george R. R. Martin. he does he's very clever at he'll build up characters that we can actually easily associate with or recognize and just put them in a setting which is very alien to us so like his characters have this kind of balance of light and dark in them. There's no one good, there's no one bad. It's people sort of struggling with themselves and the situation that they're put into. It's really quite good writing. Oh, it turns out that Draw of Mikey, <laughs> I still haven't even chosen that as an official title yet. Draw of me? Draw of Mikey. Oh, you know what? Digressing. There's another channel uh, called Draw with Jazza. This is a massive channel, by the way, way way more popular than my one and for very very good reason if you've not heard of his check it out as well draw with jazza and it is really popular with really for really good reason it's it's top stuff that guy will entertain you do knowledge animations drawing and he will give you serious knowledge and has an excellent video i recommend i watched it a while ago many of you guys if you're budding artists as well probably subscribe to the channel i've probably seen this video a long time ago i'm just behind of the times had a really good video where he talks about different types of practice, like the three main types of practice, when they tend to come up, what you gain from it, and which are kind of best to follow under certain situations or certain requirements. It's really strong stuff because if you start to reach a point where you're getting better and better at art and you're really enjoying what you're doing, what you eventually do is you hit a roadblock somewhere and you just think, I need to be better. I'm still drawing, but I'm not getting better following my drawing. What do I do now? How do I? solve this situation so i recommend check out what he's got going on what am i doing over here i'm just drawing in fingertips to kind of show that fingers are spread out and then i'll kind of worry about joining them in in a bit with old melly sandy this maybe is going to be her behind maybe doing a final conjuration she's probably going to be nudie buff she always in a, i mean <laughs> the show game of thrones every time it makes you remember the name of a new character it rewards you as well by showing you some boobs and in the books like getting naked isn't such a big deal in those days characters get naked all the time which is great news um so maybe because it's going to be such an intimate situation here like it's kind of a river i'm just checking through the camera phone making sure it's in focus it's kind of like a revitalization scene it's going to be a really deep emotional moment so there's going to be a physical bond as well Jon Snow's cloak and shirt are going to be torn open maybe his cloak's going to be around his arms or around the deck of wherever they are because you need to get the stab wound you need to see uh, his body for marks and of course give him the kiss of life I can't imagine Jon Snow although he's really wiry and wily I can't imagine he's very heavy sets after living in the Night's Watch mostly just cold and all sinewy like a real tough guy after so long um and so Melisandre as well, she likes to get naked when she's conjuring her magic. Maybe her robes would be slipping off as well. She'd bring that all down to like let the heat of her body, the flame of her law, the fire that burns within her, kind of help her with her conjuring skill. Conjuring from the dead, pretty much. Although she's just a vessel and it is the law of the fire that really does the work. So maybe a bit of robage will be, robage and robage will be kind of somewhere down here like that and then same on this side in the book she's described as having a heart-shaped face and 
I haven't because I do no research before I make videos. I just talk and upload. I don't actually know the name of the actress um, in the Game of Thrones TV series. So if you do, drop it in the comments. And she portrays the character, I think, incredibly well. But her shape isn't like super, super oval. She hasn't got like chubby cheeks that really give a swirl into it. I mean, she's hot. Don't get me wrong. She's She's got it going on. But um, I often think about, like everybody does, drawing up characters as they're described in a book and forgetting how they are in a TV series and seeing how it compares. And uh, she's one of them. In this instance, I again haven't given her a heart shaped face. I've given her a fairly square one. I'm just thinking about her being some sort of incantation. I don't know, maybe. Again, this is not going to be particularly excellent. As close, maybe somewhere up around here. So she's got maybe she got red eyebrows in the book. I forget. Nonetheless, don't worry about this. This isn't going to be amazing. But I just need to get the idea across. Maybe I'll just I've given her a real jawline in this picture. Let's just smooth out that curve. Make it a bit more effeminate, rough as ever. Pop some ears back here. Maybe I think she gives like quite red lipstick in the books. Everything about her is red, including this massive. Is it like a ruby? I think she's got like a fire ruby in a choker around her throat, which of course is going to be way thinner than I've drawn her. Whilst I was talking to you guys, I've drawn like a really heavy framework as if I'm. Um, Drawing you guys like another like male character, like a bodybuilder or something. Oh, I do apologise, Melisandre. I'm not trying to insinuate anything about your masculinity. Although women can have a strong masculinity around them as well. You know, it's all it's all fine. Empowerment and all that. Modern. Let's just get that in. Let's just get that on us there. And then God knows what will be going on with her hair. Let's have a little look on the internet. Get a picture... Melisandre, done a few cheeky Google searches. Um, yeah, it's all right. In I'm getting loads of pictures of the film. Oh, there's one of her in a bathtub. That's off screen. It's absolutely fine to have. Um, maybe, yeah, in the film, she's kind of a bit hair tied back here around the side, as well as arcing up the top. Got kind of a split setting there, and then it all kind of comes back into a bun of various degrees. Don't worry about this. What I'm basically getting at is something of this direction and this direction. Uh, what I'll do as well, actually, uh, in case you guys are wondering about the equipment I'm using or the paper or something like that, is I'll probably, if this series kind of kicks off and I end up doing it quite a lot, maybe make a pre-recorded intro where maybe I just explain what it is we're doing today and then a pre-recorded outro I can stick on the back of every episode where I just sort of remind you guys what kind of pens and paper I'm using and basically say a great big thank you and probably encourage you to subscribe to the channel or um, support me on Patreon or something like that. I'm always adding that to the end of the video. Subscribe and Patreon every single time. So she's going to be like this. Maybe all the robes and stuff are going to be billowing because of the flaming magic that's going on, the power of the law. Jon Snow, I don't know what's going to be going on here, but there will be like smoke out of his mouth something to to indicate that there's some real crazy juju going on at the moment snow you know nothing and that actress as well who plays um Ygritte in uh the tv series she is in another tv show big apologies by the way for all of our um american viewers which is to most of you um because i only know the odd English TV show. I'm so out of touch with everything. Uh, but there is a show which uh, covers a conspiracy to basically end the world. Oh, what was it called? And she is in season two of that. She's really good. And basically, where I was going is that actress is freaking hot. She's okay in my books. If you're watching, give me a call, girl. <laughs> let's, let's put this. Some kind of flames. Some kind of burning will be coming out of John. The wounds will probably be flaming and steaming in some crazy scene where all the just 
energy and magic the flame burns through his body so yeah um the reason i'm talking about this is because melisandre has uh said before in her books that when she was performing her magic which is getting stronger all the time uh she nearly burnt up inside like the toll on her is massive as well the flames burn within her which is great they burn away the poison in the first chapter you ever see her where another lovely old maester tries to uh, finish her off oddly enough and uh, oh don't even get me started on what the maesters are up to if you're reading the books like there's some shit going on at the citadel i am freaking intrigued about that okay so let's be getting back to john snow here he is he's all like ah, oh, i'm being reborn of flame ah, oh, i'm pretty sure i just inhabited ghost for oh it was ghost <laughs> i remembered the name of the direwolf it was ghost everybody well done he's like ah, oh, i've inhabited ghost and i've learned all the true things and maybe because um oh there's a guy there's a wildling who can also inhabit animals i really should do some research before i do these videos and he uh he well, he, he dies oh varamir six skins yeah and at the moment of his death as a warg he kind of experiences oneness with the animals and then with the immediate environment and then it kind of disperses in the whole world and he has like knowledge of all things i think he witnesses his birth or something like that it's incredible so Basically, Jon Snow might have the same kind of experience, maybe become aware of Bran whilst he's in all of the Godswood trees at the same time. Maybe the whole event will be um, experienced by Bran and crew. Where the hell is Rickon? Are they in the island of trees? Bear Island or something like that? I don't know. I think Osher's gone to check them out. And uh, yeah, maybe Jon Snow will know his true heritage and then basically be the badass. He has grown up to be anyway. He's actually a real badass these days, especially um, when in the TV series. I'm running out of. Oh no. Oh no, everybody. Ah, <gasps> oh, Hangman's Delight. I've run out of ink in the pen. Don't worry about it. This is why you always keep spares. Um, where other popular men might go out clubbing, meet ladies, and always keep a condom in their back pocket. Good old Mikey Mega Mega here, you know. Always. I was saying that. Where the hell is my bag of these sort of things? Always keep spare ink nibs hanging around. Do I keep spare ink nibs hanging around? You know what? If I'm really smart, I will edit this out of the episode. But because I kind of like this whole natural vibe where you just chill out at my room, why the hell not? You guys are technically my internet friends. Um, but I probably will just leave this in completely. Ah, oh, okay, everybody. No worries. I definitely got spare rot ring ink, rot ring ink cartridges. But we're going to just default over to a cheeky uniball, actually. Why the hell not? And that will give us a nice dark line as well. Just how we like it. Oh, I've just noticed we're on our... Kind of cracking on a bit on this video. So basically, yeah. Um, I'm going to give old Johnny Snowboy, Snowy McSnowballs, old Frozen Bollocks, Frozen Bollocks, John Snow, um, kind of maybe his poke crown there. He's still wearing part of his blacks of a watch oh yeah and you know what your watch ends when you die so technically Jon snow can um you know become a king or something now he was given the status of king of the north from his brother but i don't think a letter ever gets out in the end or something like that he was released of his vows just in case rob never made it and spoiler alert again of course he didn't that was the Red Wedding, and my God, did we learn something then. Okay, so, yeah, something like that. It's going to be flame and fire all around. More importantly, uh, Melisandre's hair is going to be all like, oh, I'm doing magic, so my hair's all crazy jive, all up in your junk. And her f hair will be like, you know, like the fire as well, and like the flame surrounding it. It's going to be incroyable. I have no idea how they might do that scene itself. Um, in the TV series, but I'm really excited to see how old George R. R. will write about it in the books. If that's what happens, something else might happen altogether. Maybe Jon Snow will simply be dead. I mean, it would really hurt my feelings if he was. And then the whole thing will focus on Danny being Azor High. I mean, it could happen. He is not afraid to kill off characters, old George R. R. That's a little bit creepy. He likes to create life, fictional life, but he creates it nonetheless. And then he murders them. So that's a shame. I've got a really scary feeling that um, Game of Thrones isn't going to have like a happy ending. Like maybe good will win or a balance will be restored. 
but it would be really bittersweet somehow like um aria and john they'll meet again and they'll finally be together but it will be in the final moment where john knows aria is a faceless man but doesn't realize it's her and then he'll stab her or something and then she'll have a final face reveal as she dies and i'll be like oh back together again and you know we'll be watching it on the tv crying our goddamn eyes out aria stark who's the actress who plays aria is it millie something basically yeah, she's world cool as well in my book. Good girl. Excellent actress to play Arya. That's literally... In the books, there are a few characters who I see differently than the actors on TV. Because I read... Well, I watched the first season of Game of Thrones with Sean Bean. Oh, man. Such a powerful actor as well. Uh, Sharp! Sharp's men! And... Literally, I'd never heard of it before. It's completely out of touch with a lot of really good fantasy. And so that was my idea of what everybody looks like. So then I read the books after that and read pretty much all of the books before the second season uh, came out way, way back. And Sean Bean is how Ned Stark is to me as a result of that. Although he's described maybe a touch differently. Caitlin is very similar, but I see her a little bit differently. Melisandre I see similar, but differently. Jon Snow is exactly like the actor Jon Snow. They nailed it with, is it Kit Harrington? And Arya Stark as well is exactly as I see Arya being played. She's absolutely smashed it. Good girl. Okay. So something like this. But it's more like flames as well. So it's going to be burning. Not like hair under water, but hair on fire. It's all got to be fire. And then round here, we're going to make all of this darker and maybe sketch in her robe some more. Basically, just overwork this piece until you're not worried about the fact that none of the characters look like anyone and none of the dimensions work. But just overwork it a little bit so that it kind of all squeezes in to create some kind of vague image of that sort. So how are we doing for time, everybody? Hmm, looking through the old phone door camera. Let's give that a cheeky little nudge and adjust. For those of you who don't already know, when I record stuff, all I'm doing is I'm balancing the camera phone on a coat hanger that sticks out above my monitor screen. This is still a really low tech channel. So do come support me and stuff like that. Eventually I'll earn enough money to get like touchscreen tablet. I'll do amazing artwork. It'll all be great. And then who knows? Move to Japan, draw manga for the rest of my life. Oh, that would be the dream. The disgusting dream of being an otaku in the forbidden country. Okay, so let's get some of this. Melisandre, let's work on you some more. Let's have a lovely bit of collar line. Let's get that major boobage happening a little bit darker. And then we can start to worry about your robes, your arms and ting. Darkness here. Good. And your robes are some real deep reds, girl. So they're going to be quite dark colors as well if we get that in i think she might have red i don't know where you get um nail varnish in game of thronesy timesy but i feel like melisandre is a girl who have quite long uh, nails and it will be black or red at the end such as her sorcery but she could probably just choose to do that or what it's just reminded me of is total recall there's a scene where a girl's working as a receptionist on the desk. It's a bit of an adult film. It's an old Schwarzenegger classic, one of the best. And, um, oh yeah, not the remake. Jesus, no, don't worry about that. And uh, this girl at the reception desk, this is really a drawing series for somebody who's um, in their late 20s, early 30s, by the way, because all I'm talking about is references to stuff that I know. I'm not trying to be uh, topical or up to date at all, except for Game of Thrones. But there's a girl there on like, uh, the reception desk to some place, and she's able to change her nail colours just by like, tapping the tips like uh some kind of paint shop pro art nail pen good technology that will actually exist i reckon i reckon the next biggest thing for women oh my god copyright copyright everybody money maker are gonna be digital nails digital nails that you put on like a shellac or um, a lacquer and you don't paint them you just tap them and they'll change color or change pattern and you can just each morning tap them and choose oh my god i've got to market this why am I drawing, wasting my time here? This could be worth millions. <laughs> God, why am I going to upload this video and give away possibly the best idea I've ever had in my life? I need to um, get a lawyer straight away. 
digital nails everybody okay if you ever see that happening in real life when you guys are older back at home just remember that some guy came up with it on youtube years and years ago oh man if i was a girl i'd probably care about that so much more but i would genuinely market it um but i'm busy drawing right now so i'll have to do it later maybe see what's going on okay so yeah let me remind you guys as well yeah whatever you want we'll talk about anything in this series this is where it can be nice and casual um i guess if this continues there'll probably be as a general rule of thumb lots of swearing and spoilers and talking about nothing to do with art as well as uh stuff to do with art i have no idea how it's going to go for the most part all you're going to see are really really rough bits of sketches like this but basically me taking the opportunity to draw along with you i mean this series is called maybe draw with me or draw with mikey but if you're drawing at home then maybe you're not drawing with me maybe i'm drawing with you in which case um thanks for having me at your house um but it's polite to offer a guest a cup of tea and i don't remember anybody offering me a tea out of my computer screen so if anything you're a bit rude i won't hold it against you but you know try harder next time okay and let's just darken up john's deep deep scarring how are we doing for time oh we're running close to having to uh, drop into a time lapse to make this episode continue on something like that let's say stab rooms in some kind of system like this again i'm gonna make the flames nice and darkly outlined to help balance the uh, colors not the colors but the uh tones and light balance in this picture so again just something like that Got a bit more space on the chest to draw the flames having way more effect out of this wound maybe that's the final one that the knife gets pulled out of in either case, you kind of get a general idea of this kind of fiery phoenix from the uh, flames rebirth back from the dead. Oh, my God. You know what? I've never put those two things together before in my life. Uh, Rolor and Occult, they're basically uh, the mark of a phoenix. They're all about rebirth and fire and fending off the darkness and being born anew. John Phoenix Snow. Oh, my God. Or worse. John will be reborn and Ghost will die for it. Oh. That would actually, if Ghost dies in Vince next series, I'm going to freak out. I mean, it's only a quiet wolf, but I bloody loved it. Let's just get a little bit of flame here. It's a good thing I um just casually started working on this side of a pad. If I tried to go all the way, then we'd be here for bloody ages. Although, from most of your comments, you seem to like longer videos, which is great. Because I love having you guys along for the journey. If you're anything like me, you love drawing. Although you probably don't talk as much shit as I do throughout the entire process let's have some flame sound effects and john's all like ah, i'm back i'm back <coughs> i'm back awesome and then he'll be like my god i know everything i know my parents are bow to me underlings now nah, he'll still be cool oh there we go so my camera just because i'm recording in as high a quality as i can i've got a limited recording time on the camera it just hit its mark and sort of beeped off so i've just turned it uh, back on again really quickly to say uh, that's got to be the end of this episode of just sketching this out maybe we'll drop into a little bit of time lapse whilst i just work off the back of that and i'll say goodbye to you lovely people at the end get in the comments let me know um if you've got any ideas how to make this format work or what you want to see drawn in further episodes or anything like that do certainly let me know um but as for now we'll have a little speedy speedy arty arty Okie dokie guys and welcome back so yeah as you probably saw just putting my stuff away as you probably saw in the time lapse bit um i kind of just had more fun of it basically so we've got flames around melisandre's hands and they're like a really bright area the other bright areas all the 
burning zone coming out of Jon Snow. Obviously, there's going to be light and fire coming out of his mouth. And she's in her sort of like, you know, sophorific trance that she gets into sometimes. And then just loads of light and dark and black billowing smoke that she gets involved with as well. Uh, you can't have shadow without flame or light or something like that. Basically, she makes up a really weak excuse for giving birth to an evil demon shadow baby at some point. Um, but, you know, everybody needs a hobby. So, sell a V. Um... So there we go. Basically, what I was doing here is that I had an idea, a thought in my mind, um, and in my head I've got like this brilliant image of a final piece that I can't quite perfectly imagine as of yet. So um, in order not to forget that, just be satisfied with jotting the idea down. This is just a really rough sketch that's going in my sketchbook, but what that means is that I don't have to keep remembering this idea I've had for a picture. I've got it here as like a little draft file. And I can refer back to that. I mean, I've got loads of pictures like that in this book, but I can't show them to you because some of them are for secret projects. Um, and it means you can just come back to it later. If you have a great idea for a drawing or even a story or a thought or anything in your head, put it on paper. Even if it's just a rough version, the paper will remember it. You don't have to. You can come back to it in a month, a year, whatever. Um, so, yeah, this is basically what the idea of Draw of Mikey is going to be. Uh, let's talk about art or anything. Actually, yeah, let's just talk about anything. I don't care. Get in the comments if you want a topic or you want questions or anything like that, or you've got feedback, let me know about it. When we eventually do another one of these, hopefully it'll be off the back of um, a useful drawing tutorial. So hopefully I'll try to incorporate whatever the lesson of that tutorial might be into the drawing so that you guys can follow along at home a bit more. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just really sketching and chilling out. Not for too long, not for too little, so that it's basically easy for me the lazy guy making these videos to do fairly regularly um okay guys uh what questions do you always tend to have this is a sketchbook with quite thick paper it's quite a nice one um, because i really overwork when i get inking with the pen you always ask me about this it's a rot ring extra fine nib art pen running out of ink obviously and then i just backed up with this uniball fine liner because it does the job i've got a whole pack of these they're definitely worth it and some tea in the background there cheeky little playing card to stop my hand from smudging on the paper and that's about it for today okay everybody i really look forward to um hearing your thoughts and seeing you guys in the next episode of draw with mikey or who knows we'll call it mega mega draw or just chill out to i i don't know it'll be draw with mikey draw with mikey is the easiest answer to that series um if I'm clever in editing around about now, uh, will be links. One of those links will say subscribe. Do come subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video in any way. It's mostly video games and artwork. Basically, things I like doing, I upload to YouTube. And um, there'll also be a link to Patreon as well. That's where you can get access to uh, lots of artwork I don't put on YouTube. Some of it a little bit naughtier. And uh, loads of other prizes for people who kindly support me. So do check that out as well. But otherwise, peace and love, everybody. Namaste, and I'll see you guys next time around. Goodbye. Goodbye.